So now USA is planning to place a ban on Burkina Faso and Mali. Why? Because of the latest deal they just signed with Russia. Yes, Russia is now going to build nuclear power stations for both Burkina Faso and Mali. Just two days ago, Asimi Guido was in Russia to finalize this deal. And guess what? USA is not happy at all. While USA was busy bombing, launching airstrikes on Iran, China was quietly in Africa signing deals with 53 countries. Can you imagine? 53 African nations. And these countries? China said they won't pay any tariffs for goods imported from China. So what's really happening? While USA is out here attacking, disrespecting, and banning Africa, Russia and China are building strong relationships, offering partnerships and business, not threats. And now USA is just shouting, threatening African nations, don't work with China, don't work with Russia. But they don't want to offer anything meaningful. They don't want to build, just threats. If you don't distance yourself from Russia and China, they say, we will ban you too. But tell me how many African countries have they already banned? What exactly are they expecting? Because Africa is waking up. Africa is choosing its own path now. Bringing together people from all African countries here was a dream. African youth who can come together, talk to each other, and discuss the future prospects of our continent. I am truly very happy to see you. And I can tell you that I love this youth who understands who is waking up. Our mission is certainly difficult, but thanks to you, the mission is becoming easier and easier. We need to talk to each other to raise awareness so that everyone can awaken the consciousness of those who are still asleep. We have a challenge, and I think this challenge starts with education first. Many of you are leaders, entrepreneurs, opinion leaders in your countries. You need to be able to get the message across, especially to the younger ones, and our educational systems must change to take into account our real circumstances and educate children to become better citizens of tomorrow. Make sure that the younger generation, as well as the elders who may not have understood, can grasp the meaning of the struggle we must undertake for Africa to truly unite. We have been stripped of our culture. They came and imposed a culture on us that is not our own. I think that today, across all walks of life in Africa, we are gradually returning to our roots. Culture in Africa means peace. It means tolerance. It is in Africa that we speak of the palaver tree, where people gather to talk and communicate. They introduce so that we would never again be able to sit down, discuss, talk, and reflect on the prospects for the future. But today, here we are. We told the African youth garden in Ouagadougou for this day. For hours, you will be able to exchange ideas and plan something for the future. From this moment on, each of you is an ambassador to spread the message of the revolution so that the youth can get to work, unite, and take their destiny into their own hands. There is no problem without a solution as long as we can sit down and talk. But there are also situations where we are forced to fight to restore dignity and integrity. This is the fight that the people of the Sahel are waging today against the international that has been imposed on us. We thank you all for your constant support for our countries in this struggle. You spoke about the growing inequalities in Africa between the rich and the poor. I completely agree and we are fighting against that as well. The riches become richer and the poor become poorer. This is unacceptable because it is a system that was created in most of our states so that the richest are the ones who support leaders who favor this in and the poor always remain poor. This is what I have called the Hitlerian policy. We must all unite so that these inequalities come to an end because in this union, personal interest must not take precedence. We must first consider the collective interest, and it is possible. Here in Burkina, we are indeed facing many challenges in this struggle, but we are going to see it through.
Incredible! Captain Ibrahim Traore is planning something no African leader has ever done before. A high-speed railway stretching across West Africa. We're talking about trains connecting Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. All built by African engineers with zero help from the West. This project is called the Pan-African Line. And it's not just about transportation. It's about independence, trade without borders, travel without visas, Progress without permission. Imagine going from Ouagadougou to Niamey in just three hours. No checkpoints, no delays, just African speed and power. Traore says, we're not waiting for foreign aid, we're building the future ourselves. This isn't just steel on tracks, it's a new route to African freedom. Tell us why you think there's such an uprising around the world. Um, blacks, Africans all around the world seem to be cheering this guy on i mean they are they're coming out in droves uh in for rallies in support of him wanting the west to right. keep their hands off hands uh, off yep yeah why do you think they're and even here in the united states i'm seeing a lot of support with uh you know the in the black churches the pastors coming out and saying you know talking about this guy and this leader and and praying that the lord protect him i mean why do you think there is such a uh, a rallying around him when you are from a community whose leadership has been executed by force dr king malcolm x medgar evers bunchy carter from the black panthers you cannot help but feel resonance with other black communities who have lost leaders by deep state execution patrice lumumba of the congo Thomas Sankara himself was executed under suspicious circumstances that fit the deep state model. And everybody in Africa knows it. And so we have all, in a collective sense, as black folks in the diaspora, have felt the need for somebody to rise up like this again. We tried leaderless resistance. Leaderless resistance has its merits. But actually leadership encapsulated in a person with integrity and with force is something that has hit us all in a very real deep way because we know that we need it so now we have somebody who's embodying this example and that's why regardless of where you stand in the diaspora everybody resonates with ibrahim it's like can we have somebody who's forceful enough to protect what's being built and not use that force to prey upon the people here in black america we have plenty of greedy moocher people you know who talked a good game but didn't back it up didn't stand on business for the actual people they said they were serving. So Ibrahim shows up and we're like, can we get more of this, please? Thank you. And that's why people are resonating all across the world. Yeah, it's interesting that, um, you know, when I look at what's going on in Burkina Faso and, um, you know, it's like it's like the West. So the West obviously got into the slave trade and did that until they could no longer do that. And mm -hmm. when that was no longer OK, it was like, OK, all right, fine. Uh, we, we, we can't do slavery, but we'll figure out another way to siphon right. resources. We'll figure out another way to control and we'll do it through like these multinational corporations that will basically just come in and own everything. You know, they'll come in and siphon all the resources, own everything. And the people will essentially still be enslaved to us, but just using economic slavery rather than actual bonded in chains type slavery. We Nigerians. Do we really know that we are gradually losing our values? Our country is gradually losing its value. The reason why I'm saying this is that other countries in Africa, in Africa continent, are waking up. And my own country, Nigeria, the giant of Africa, do you know we are losing our values? We are yet to wake up. Go to countries like Kenya, Burkina Faso, name it. They are waking up. These countries in Africa are waking up and they are taking the bull by its horn. Revolution is ongoing and our country, Nigeria, we are still playing game with the old folks. We are online judging ourselves, talking irrelevant things. Why other countries are waking up? They are standing up for their country. They are standing up for Africa. But yet, my country, just recently there was 30 days protests in Kenya. You need to come see how Kenyans came out massively for their protests. They weren't playing. Even when they were being flogged by the armies, they were being harassed with bullet guns by the armies, the youths did not back up. They went into the protest day in, day out for what they have assigned for themselves. But my own country, 
I don't even know if you guys completed your 30 days protest. I don't think you guys even did up to 10 days before you all ran in. Burkina Faso, Ibrahim Traoré did something no one expected. Yesterday, he officially admitted over 70,000 young people into engineering programs across the country free of charge. This bold decision is meant to give young people the skills to build, innovate and completely transform their lives. From poor villages to crowded cities, hopeful students are now smiling with joy as doors of opportunity open like never before. Families broke down in tears after hearing the news. One mother from a rural village said, We never thought our son would go to school, let alone study engineering. This isn't just about education. Traoré says this move will help end poverty, create thousands of new jobs and prepare a new army of African innovators and engineers ready to build a new Burkina Faso. And here's the best part. The government has already promised to provide laptops, meals, housing and even job placement after graduation. The youth are calling it the golden opportunity. And the world is watching closely as this small West African country rises faster than ever before. Don't forget to follow Pan Africa Television for more inspiring African stories like this. Ibrahim Traoré, the president of Burkina Faso, has introduced community service to curb indiscipline among road users. On Tuesday, May 6, 2025, about 300 people were caught committing different road offences. They included drivers, motor riders, bicycle riders, and even pedestrians. Some of them crossed the road without obeying the traffic light. Others were jaywalking. Some were burning rubbish by the roadside. And yeah, others committed different road offenses without respecting the highway code. They were arrested given safety vests and put straight to work. Some of them desilted garters, others swept the street, and they did all sort of activities to keep the community clean. It was a clear message to all citizens that, hey, there is a new man in charge, you have to be disciplined. And therefore, a lot of people who saw the videos online started respecting the road traffic rules. And so, yes, we commend Ibrahim Traoré for instilling discipline among his people, regardless of who you are, where you come from, your, the skin, the, the color of your skin. If you are in Ouagadougou, if you are in Burkina Faso, you have to respect the rules. And that is the message he wants to send across. When you're arrested, you will not be sent to prison, you will not be sent to the police station. You will be given a safety vest and you will be put to work. There are a lot of choked garters on the streets of Ouagadougou. And so if you really want to work free for your country, then please disrespect the traffic rules. And Ibrahim Traoré and his men will definitely get